Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today and with Thanksgiving coming up, I want to share with you a project that can both make your table look nicer and also be more environmentally friendly. And that is cloth napkins. My family switched to cloth napkins years ago and we have not looked back. We have a basket of cloth napkins in the middle of our table and that's what we use on a daily basis. And then we just throw them in with the whites every time that I am washing those and reuse and reuse. So this is one of the methods to make cloth napkins that I use and this is just to hem the edges with a double fold and we make it a little fancy with these nice mitered corners on the napkins. I prefer to use quilting cotton for my cloth napkins. I feel like that's the right balance of softness and you know it absorbs when you need to wipe your mouth with it. Some of the polyester based napkins I feel like don't, um, things just sit on the surface of those. And so I use this 12 by 12 size and it gets a little smaller when I fold in the edges. And I chose that because it's pretty similar to what a paper napkin size would be when um, the paper napkin is being used. This is slightly bigger. If you want like formal dinner napkins that you can fold into things, the size for those is generally 18 inches by 18 inches square. And you can do whatever you want, like any size in between. Um, I believe paper napkins are actually usually nine by nine, so they're a teeny bit smaller than what I'm showing here. Whatever you want, that's what you can do. That's the beauty of making your own. So let's see how I do this. The first thing I like to do if I'm going to be making one with mitered corners is to get out my iron and iron the edges. So you can use a ruler or a pressing guide to do this. I'm going to use the stripes on my fabric and eyeball this, but I just go down each edge of the napkin and I create two folds the same width. So I'm doing approximately three eighths of an inch here. And then I rotate and do the same thing again. If you've never done this before, if you're not good at eyeballing, I do suggest using a pressing guide. And that can be as simple as taking a sheet of paper or cardstock or even like a cereal box that you've cut with a straight edge and then marking lines on it, but mark lines on it that show you the depth of each one so that you can make sure that this fold and the one on this side are the same width. If they're not the same width, it's gonna create issues with you creating those mitered corners. Once you have pressed those edges, then I've switched to the sample because I did some marking so that it is easier for you to see. If you unfold the corner, what you will see is that each of your folds created a fold line in the fabric and it makes kind of a grid in the corner. So you can see I've marked out where the fold lines are so they're easier to see on camera. And then what you want to do I've gone ahead and pressed this side flatter so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. You want to take the corner and press it into that other corner, like so, so you've made a 45 degree angle, and then press it again. And then once you've got those, and it is still keeping that 45 degree angle, you can press the two side seams in back along the fold lines that you pressed in before. So you can see how I've got 45 and 45. And here, if I press along those same fold lines I did before. There we go. How these two 45 degree angles on each side come together at the corner there. And you can pin it if you'd like. If you're going to do any further pressing of this, I do strongly recommend that if you're pinning, you use these glass head pens because they won't melt in the iron. If you use 
the type of pins that have plastic on them, they can melt when you press this. So here's another corner here and you can see I already pressed this one so it's sitting nicely without me needing to hold the with the pins like I did on that corner. Let me go ahead and press out the other corners and then we'll take this to the machine. I like to start in the middle of an edge and instead of aligning my needle like moving the fabric over like this, I like the presser foot to be centered on the fold and then I just move my needle over so that it is sewing right on the edge of that fold. All I need to do is trim off the threads from where I started and stopped and you can see that I've got nice mitered corners on each edge. Alright, that is how you make cloth napkins and I should point out that this same mitering technique that we did on the corners here could be used for things like placemats. So that is a very handy technique to use on how to miter the corners. And I hope that this is a quick little sew. These could even be used as a gift. Make a stack of them, tie a pretty ribbon, and hand them out to your guests. It's something unusual, but I think, especially with people trying to be more environmentally friendly and sustainable, that that could be a really good gift. So if you would like some more gift ideas, I've got a playlist here.